I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak, Badash. Double honor to the apostles and elders, the great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the elect and much respect to the brothers pushing this word in the four winds of the earth. Shalom to you, few sisters out there as well. It's Brother Abiyah coming at you with another lesson. And um, for this lesson here, I just want to go through uh, certain stories in the Bible when the Heavenly Father uh, judged people, you know, for, for various reasons. Okay, and Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. So I'm going to start here with this one. It's Acts 5 and 1. I'm going to read 1 through 11. The story of uh, Ananias and Sapphira. And it says, but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it. So she knew what was going on. You know, she was in on the scam or the scheme and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thine heart? to lie to the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and to keep back part of the price of the land. And uh, while it remains, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto the Heavenly Father. You know, because they sold... Uh, they sold uh, their land, and instead of giving it all to the apostles, they tried to keep a little bit for themselves. And it says, uh, while it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto the Most High. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the spirit. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much? And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried Thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then she fell down straightway at his feet and yielded up the spirit. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Right? So, you know, the heavenly father doesn't like unjust dealings and he doesn't like liars people that try to deceive and that's what they did you know people don't understand that the heavenly father's eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun which means what which means he sees all you know and you can't fool the heavenly father you only fooling yourself okay so for them doing what they did the heavenly father put them both to death man you know took the uh, spirit right out of them man you know for their uh for their doings and um i got three more accounts i just wanted to you know bring this out real quick uh once again lord willing this is edifying i'm gonna go to second samuel just a quick cut through the spirit this is uh second samuel uh, uh six okay and this is the the account of uh of uzzah Okay, and it says again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, uh, 30,000, and David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baal of Yehawada to bring up from thence the ark of the Most High, whose name is called by the name of the Lord Yehawah of hosts that delivereth between the cherubims. And they set the ark of the Most High upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gilbea. And Uzzah and uh, Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drave the new cart, and they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanying 
the ark of the Most High. And Ahio went before the ark, and David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on, on harps and on psalteries and timbrels and on cornets and on cymbals. And when they had came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of the Most High and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and the Most High smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of the Most High, because the only one that was able to touch the ark of the Heavenly Father was David. You know, no one else did. No one else was able to touch it, you know. So when this guy touched it, he thought he was doing a good thing, you know. The Heavenly Father, out of his anger, put him to death just for touching, you know, the ark of the Heavenly Father, man. You know, I wanted to get this real quick, man. Uh, Sirach 43 and 29. Okay, and it says, uh, The Lord is terrible and very great and marvelous in his power. And he's not a respecter of persons either. You know, now it troubled David that this happened to Uzzah, but the Heavenly Father didn't care. He put him to death because he wasn't supposed to touch it, man. Let me get back to uh, 2 Samuel 6, and I believe I was on 8. And it says, And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah, and he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of Obed, Obedidim, uh, the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obedidim, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed, Obedidim and all his household. You know, and this also uh, goes into the account you know, further down. I'm not going to read it all. When um, Saul's daughter, Saul's daughter seen David and she had a great uh, hatred for him. And um, she disrespected, uh, she went up to him and disrespected David. And uh, the Heavenly Father made it to where she couldn't have any children until, until her death, man. You know, so she was childless. She lived childless because she disrespected a man of the Lord, man. You know, and this is a, another a powerful account in the Bible that I wanted to bring out, man. And uh, let me see. I think I got two more. Yeah, let me go here. Let me go to um, go to First Kings, the thirteenth chapter. I'm gonna read uh, this. It says, "And behold." There came a man of the Most High out of Judah by the word of the Lord, Yahweh, unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Right? So I'm going to skip down to four. And it said, And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of, of the Most High, which had uh, cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him and his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up so that he could not pull it in again to him. And it says the altar also was rent and the uh, ashes poured out from the altar. According to the sign which the man of the Most High had given by the word of the Lord Yahweh, and the king answered and said unto the man of the Most High, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy power and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of the Most High besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and it became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of the Most High, Come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of the Most High said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread, nor drink water in this place. 
For so it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way and returned, not by the way that he had came to Bethel. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of the Most High had done that day in Bethel in the words which he had spoken unto the king. Them they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of the Most High went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his son, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon, and went after the man of the Most High, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of the Most High that camest unto Judah, or camest from Judah? And he said, I am. And he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. And he said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And the angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water, but he lied unto him. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drink water. And it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of the Most High that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy power commanded thee, but came his back and has eaten bread and drinking water in the place of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him and his carcass was cast in the way. And the ass stood by it, and the lion also stood by the carcass. Right? So the Heavenly Father, as we all, you know, a lot of us know the story here. The Heavenly Father put him to death for being disobedient. Okay? But I wanted to go ahead, um, Second Chronicles, and it just shows how the Heavenly Father does not play games, man. If you don't do what he tells you to do, you know, you're liable to get put to death, man. Okay, this is Second Chronicles 18 and 20 and 21. And it says, Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Okay, so that's what was on that man, you know, that uh, prophet, okay, that uh, pretty much uh, finagled the man of the Lord, man. That was a lying spirit that was on that man that said, you know, an angel came to me and told you to come back to my house, you know? If you don't do things that the Heavenly Father wants you to do, you're going to be put to death at the end of the day, man. And that's, uh, that's, I love that story too, man. And I love, you know, these accounts. I might continue to do lessons like this, just going in the Bible and pulling out certain stories, man, that, that, that hit me, you know? But yeah, that was a lying spirit that was on that dude, man. And all he had to do was what the Heavenly Father asked him to do, you know, and he would have lived, you know? That's why when we on our walk, we can't let lying spirits, uh, you know, get us put to death man you know we got to stay on the path and block all that shit out man you know we know what is expected of us when it comes to the heavenly father so you know can't be swayed to the right or the left man just got to keep going straight and do as uh is expected of us you know that's what i get from that from that uh story there man and um i was gonna go into the one about uh nabal 
in 1 Samuel 25, uh, the one where, uh, you know, David and his men was helping this dude. And um, I'm not going to go to it, though, because I'm going to have to read the whole chapter. But David and his, his men helped him, right? And when it was time for Nabal to help David and them, you know, he basically gave them his ass to kiss, man, right? And told him, no, I'm not going to help you. You know, so David and his men, you know, they was pretty upset about that, man. So they were going back to uh, pretty much kill this dude, Nabal, man. And if it wasn't for his wife, uh, Abigail, they would have went back there and killed him. You know, but the things that were owed to them from Nabal, uh, Abigail pretty much, uh, you know, gave them and gave them a warm apology as well. Right. So it made David, you know, change his mind and say, you know what, whatever. But with this dude doing so, Nabal doing that, you know, the Heavenly Father gave him a stroke. And, uh, you know, he died 10, 10 days later, you know. The Heavenly Father, man, that that, that uh, reminds me of, uh, you know, um, the Heavenly Father will avenge at the end of the day when you did wrong. You know, I, I love that story, too. Let me get uh, Sirach 29. Let's get Sirach 29 and 4 through 6. Sirach, yeah. Right? And it says, Many, when a thing was lent to them, reckoned it to be found and put them to trouble that helped them. You know? Because that's how it goes out here a lot, man. Especially in Israel, when you help someone or you give them some money or something and they're expected to pay it back, right? Right? They always give you some damn excuse or some some BS or or give you an attitude when it's time for them to pay you back, you know? Till he have received, he will kiss a man's hand, and for his neighbor's money he will speak uh submissively. But when he should repay, he will prolong the time and return words of grief and complain of the time. If he prevail, he shall hardly receive the half, and he and he will count as if he had found it. If not, he have deprived him of his money, and he have gotten him an enemy, an enemy without cause. He payeth him with cursings and railings, and for honor he will pay him disgrace. You know, and that's what that man pretty much did, man. He, uh, you know, he gained the enemy uh, through his actions, man, through not uh, doing what he was supposed to do at the end of the day. You know, but the Heavenly Father saw that and put that man to death for doing that, man. Okay? So that's another beautiful story. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to make this too long. You know, but uh, that's another one right there. This is a, uh, uh, it's my last account here. Just want to do this right here through the Spirit. Let's bring up uh, different accounts, you know, in the Bible when the Heavenly Father, you know, put people to death for, you know, various reasons. Also showing that the Heavenly Father does not play games. Okay, so I'm going to go here. And this is the account here when um, the Heavenly Father basically uh, told Saul he can't be king anymore, man. Because Saul, the Heavenly Father gave Saul instructions and Saul saw it fit to do what he wanted to do. You know? And it says, Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Okay, so the Heavenly Father gave him an order to kill everything. You know, shouldn't nothing be breathing when you go over there and do what I'm telling you to do, right? And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Telaim, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah or Yehudah, and Saul came to the city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go depart, get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. 
So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Amalekites from uh, Havla, Havla until thou comest to Shur that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. First thing he was supposed to do. And utterly destroy all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the, pe but Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and, re and refused that they destroyed utterly. Okay, he wasn't supposed to do that. He's supposed to kill the king and he's supposed to kill all of the animals, man. Okay, all the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, what have you, the sheeps. And he took all the best for himself and his men. And it said, they came, then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me, and have not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul, come to Car uh, Carmel. And behold, he set him up a place, and it is gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. <laughs> and Samuel said, What meaneth then this uh, bleeding of the sheep in mine ears, and the uh, lowing of the oxen which I hear? You know, because Samuel heard all the, all, the, uh, you know, all the animals out there, man which uh, Saul was to kill. And Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy power and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, stay and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, say on. And Samuel said, when thou was little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Saul, Yea, I have obeyed. He said, Yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Has thou has the Lord as great delight? in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than to sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast, re because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Okay? And that's what we see out here in Israel now, man. A lot of rebellion, man, which is witchcraft, man. They don't want to uh, respect, uh, rebuke, right? They want to be uh, disrespectful and not listen to brothers when brothers is trying to tell them the right thing so they can be saved, man, at the end of the day. But there's uh, a big rebellion out here going on out here right in front of our eyes, man. We seeing it more and more every day, man. Different dudes is popping up out of nowhere. <laughs> And it says, And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. <laughs> you see that, man? Being a man pleaser right there, man. That's why Saul wasn't fit to be king, because he'd rather uh, please flesh than please the heavenly father at the end of the day, man. And I wanted to get... Uh, Matthew, real quick, Matthew 10 and 28. Right? And it says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, 
but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Okay? And this is why Saul was not fit to be king, like I said earlier, because, you know, he basically chose men over the heavenly father, man. And let me see here. So, yeah, he wasn't fit to be king, man. But I'm just going to read the rest of this account, and Lord willing, it's edifying. And, uh... And it says, And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord, Yahweh. And Samuel said unto Saul, I am not, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine, that is better than thou, talking about David. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord thy power. And this is my part right here. He says, So Samuel turned again after Saul, and Saul worshiped the Lord Yahweh. Then Saul then said, Samuel, bring ye hither to me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. And Agag came unto him delicately. Agag was scared to death, man. He's probably defecating on himself, you know, leaving piss puddles. And Agag said, surely the bitterness of death is past. And Samuel said, as thy sword hath made women childless, so shall, so shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Agag in pieces before the Lord and Gilgal, and that's a that's a uh, that's a beautiful judgment right there, man. You know, that happened before the Lord, man. Why? Because Saul couldn't do it. So that heavenly Father had Samuel do it in front of Saul, man, to show him what he should have done in the first place. You know, this is why Saul was never fit to be king, man. You know, when he said, uh. I love it right here, 33. And Samuel said, as thy sword have made women childless, so shall thy mother be childless am among women. That's beautiful. And Samuel hewed Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal, man. You know, so I just wanted to bring out a couple of accounts, you know, in the Bible when the Heavenly Father, you know, judged people, man. And he didn't judge Saul, you know, but... He definitely uh, took the spirit from him and, uh, you know, uh, stopped him from being king, man, and anointed another king to take his place, you know. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring this out real quick. I, I, I pray this uh, lesson was edifying, man. You know, it's all through the spirit here. And uh, I want to say shalom to the next one.